Why do meteorologists want people to pay attention to the heat index? The major reason involves how the body responds to high heat value numbers. If the relative humidity is high, it curtails evaporation on the skin. And the body is unable to effectively cool itself, and a person will perceive that the air is warmer. When heat index values grow higher, conditions exceed the level a body can remove heat. Causing the body temperature to rise. This can cause heat-related illnesses, such as sunstroke or heat exhaustion. For example, according to the United States National Weather Service. Exposure to direct sunlight can increase the high by up to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, 9.4 degrees centigrade. And when a heat index between a mere 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32.2 degrees centigrade to 105 degrees Fahrenheit, 40.6 degrees centigrade, can cause possible sunstroke, heat exhaustion, and heat cramps, it is easy to see the meteorologist's concerns. The following table shows how the heat we actually experience changes with temperature and humidity. Humidity is expressed as a percentage, temperatures are in degrees Fahrenheit. According to the National Weather Service, sunstroke, heat cramps, and heat exhaustion are possible above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, temperatures above 105 degrees can also lead to heat stroke. And above 130 degrees heat stroke is likely if exposure to such temperatures is prolonged. How many bases are in a human's genome sequence? Here's a good reason why computers are so important to biologists working on the human genome. The amount of data is staggering. And would take scientists generations to analyze without the benefit of computers. For example, it would take about 9.5 years to read out loud. Without stopping, the 3 billion bases in a person's genome sequence. This is calculated on a reading rate of 10 bases per second, equaling 600 bases per minute. 36,000 bases per hour, 864,000 bases per day, and 315,360,000 bases per year. 1 million bases, called a megabase and abbreviated MB. Of DNA sequence data is roughly equivalent to 1 megabyte of computer data storage space. Because the human genome is 3 billion base pairs long. 3 gigabytes of computer data storage space are needed to store the entire genome. This includes something called nucleotide sequence data only and does not include other information that can be associated with sequence data. Because of such numbers, scientists working on the human genome are grateful they have computers on their side. What are survivorship curves? Survivorship curves record and plot the fate of the young. 
and their chances of survival in key age categories. Significant factors affecting all populations are birth rates, death rates, and longevity. By recording the numbers of births and deaths over a period of time. Researchers can determine the average longevity of organisms in each age class, these numbers tell a great deal about a population. There are three basic survivorship curves. Type I curves represent species that have offspring with a high survival rate. With most living to a certain age and then dying, humans are an example. Type 2 curves represent organisms with a steady death rate from the time they are born or hatch until they die. Their survivorship varies and includes such species as deer, large birds, and fish. Type 3 curves include those organisms that have a low survivorship shortly after being born, but with a high longevity for the individual organisms that survive. Maple and oak trees can be included in this category. What is computational ecology? Computational ecology can be considered a subset of environmental modeling. Because it addresses practical questions arising from environmental problems using mathematics. For example, in the field of ecotoxicology. Mathematical models are used to predict the effects of environmental pollutants on populations. Natural resource management uses mathematics to set quotas for fish and game and conservation ecologists use mathematical models to determine the effects of various recovery plans for threatened species, and even to design nature preserves. What is the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle? German physicist Werner Karl Heisenberg, 1901-1976, not only helped with the quantum theory of light waves. He also developed the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. This states that it is impossible to determine. At the same time, both the energy and velocity of a particle. What is the air quality index? Mathematics plays an important part in the air quality index, AQI, a scale developed by the U.S. government to measure how much pollution is in the air. The AQI measures five specific pollutants ozone, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide. The levels range from 0, good air quality, to 500, hazardous air quality, the higher the index. The higher the level of pollutants and the greater the likelihood of detrimental health effects. What is Avogadro's number? Avogadro's number, also called Avogadro's constant or Avogadro's figure, 
was determined by Italian physicist Lorenzo Romano Amadeo Carlo Avogadro, Count of Quarenna and Cerito. 1776-1856, who was also the first one to use the term molecule in chemistry. It represents the number of elementary entities, such as atoms, molecules, or formula units. In a mole of any chemical substance, a mole is approximately 6.02214199x1023 atoms. According to the most recent number from the National Institute of Standards and Technology. To translate even further, a mole is the molecular weight of a substance in grams. One mole is the amount of a substance that contains Avogadro's number. For example, the number of carbon atoms in 12 grams of the substance carbon 12 is equal to one mole. What is density? Density, usually abbreviated as D or R, is a mathematical concept used to describe the ratio between the mass of an object and its volume. The actual formula is the density times the volume is equal to an object's mass, or dxv equals m. In the standard, American, measurement system, density is measured in pounds per cubic foot. But in the sciences, the metric system is usually used and density is measured in grams per cubic centimeter, or grams per milliliter. For example, the density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Lead is 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter, and gold is 19.32 grams per cubic centimeter. Note, in the majority of cases, the higher the density, the heavier it feels to us on Earth. What is a logistic equation? A logistic equation, resulting in a curve on a graph, represents the exponential increase in numbers of a species until it reaches the carrying capacity in its specific environment. This carrying capacity, usually referred to by the letter K. Is the maximum population size that can be regularly sustained by an environment. Change the environment and K changes, for example. By such events as adding a predator, removing a competitor, or adding a parasite. How is wind measured? Wind speed is the measurable motion of air with respect to the surface of the earth. It is measured in terms of a unit distance over a unit time, such as miles per hour. The wind direction is also an indication of the wind's source. For example, a southerly wind means the wind is blowing toward north it is coming from a southerly direction. What is chemistry? Chemistry is the science of matter. 
It studies the composition, structure, and properties of substances, matter, and its reactions and changes. Because chemistry includes all materials in the universe, it is useful for studying many things from the chemical composition of gases in galaxies to the chemical reactions within living cells. It also includes mathematics in many forms. Such as when determining chemical compositions and understanding relationships between certain chemicals. What is engineering? Engineering is a discipline that deals with the art or science of applying scientific knowledge to solve practical problems, usually in the areas of commerce and industry. Scientists ask the why of a question, then research the answer, in contrast. Engineers want to know how to solve the problem and then how to implement the solution. But it's not always easy to separate the two. Often a scientist has to use engineering basics, such as building special equipment for research. And engineers often have to do scientific research. The word engineer, as well as engine, developed from the Latin root ingeniuses, skilled. In some languages, such as Arabic, the word for engineering also means geometry. The various branches of engineering include aerospace, agriculture, architectural, biomedical, computer, civil, chemical, electrical, environmental, mechanical, petroleum, and material science. What is engineering? Engineering is a discipline that deals with the art or science of applying scientific knowledge to solve practical problems, usually in the areas of commerce and industry. Scientists ask the why of a question, then research the answer, in contrast. Engineers want to know how to solve the problem and then how to implement the solution. But it's not always easy to separate the two. Often a scientist has to use engineering basics, such as building special equipment for research. And engineers often have to do scientific research. The word engineer, as well as engine, developed from the Latin root ingeniuses, skilled. In some languages, such as Arabic, the word for engineering also means geometry. The various branches of engineering include aerospace, agriculture, architectural, biomedical, computer, civil, chemical, electrical, environmental, mechanical, petroleum, and material science. What types of mathematics are used in engineering? Mathematics is definitely a necessity in engineering. Especially the fields of algebra, geometry, calculus, and statistics. Certain divisions of engineering rely on variations of mathematics. Including combinations of arithmetic, algebra, geometry, calculus, 
Differential Equations Probability and Statistics, Complex Analysis, and Others For example, civil and structural engineers use a great deal of linear algebra and work with matrices. Mechanical engineers use logs and exponents, calculus. Differential equations, and probability, and statistics. And a chemical engineer uses such mathematics as algebra and geometry. Logs and exponents, integral calculus, and differential equations. What types of mathematics are used in engineering? Mathematics is definitely a necessity in engineering. Especially the fields of algebra, geometry, calculus, and statistics. Certain divisions of engineering rely on variations of mathematics. Including combinations of arithmetic, algebra, geometry, calculus, differential equations. Probability and statistics, complex analysis, and others. For example, civil and structural engineers use a great deal of linear algebra and work with matrices. Mechanical engineers use logs and exponents, calculus. Differential equations, and probability, and statistics. And a chemical engineer uses such mathematics as algebra and geometry. Logs and exponents, integral calculus, and differential equations. What are some details of Jean-Baptiste Fourier's life? The accomplishments of French mathematician and physicist Baron Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier 1768-1830, prove that not all famous mathematicians did just math. Fourier was a teacher, became involved in the messy French Revolution, and was arrested for his views and imprisoned in 1794, for a time. He even feared the guillotine, but political changes resulted in Fourier being freed. By 1798 Fourier joined Napoleon's army in its invasion of Egypt as a scientific advisor. After Napoleon lost the Battle of the Nile to Nelson and was confined to Malta, Fourier continued his work in Egypt. Establishing educational facilities there and carrying out archaeological explorations. Back in France with Napoleon in 1801. He supervised the draining of the swamps of Bourguin and the construction of a highway from Grenoble to Turin. He also spent time writing Description of Egypt, a book that Napoleon edited, and included some historical rewrites. By the second edition of the book, Napoleon himself would be completely edited out of the text. As if he wasn't busy enough, during this time Fourier wrote his now famous 1807 paper. On the propagation of heat in solid bodies. A mathematical work on the theory of heat that presented one of his major contributions, the Fourier series. But it was an uphill battle to get approval from his peers. In 1811, he submitted his 1807 ideas for a mathematics prize. 
along with additional work on the cooling of infinite solids and on terrestrial and radiant heat. Only one other entry was received, making Fourier's work the obvious winner. Finally, by 1822, he published his 1811 essay. Making the techniques of Fourier analysis available to everyone. To this day, the functions that he worked out have a multitude of applications in engineering, science, and mathematics. What are some details of Jean-Baptiste Fourier's life? The Accomplishments of French Mathematician and Physicist Baron Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier 1768-1830, prove that not all famous mathematicians did just math. Fourier was a teacher, became involved in the messy French Revolution, and was arrested for his views and imprisoned in 1794, for a time. He even feared the guillotine, but political changes resulted in Fourier being freed. By 1798 Fourier joined Napoleon's army in its invasion of Egypt as a scientific advisor. After Napoleon lost the Battle of the Nile to Nelson and was confined to Malta, Fourier continued his work in Egypt. Establishing educational facilities there and carrying out archaeological explorations. Back in France with Napoleon in 1801. He supervised the draining of the swamps of Bourguin and the construction of a highway from Grenoble to Turin. He also spent time writing Description of Egypt, a book that Napoleon edited, and included some historical rewrites. By the second edition of the book, Napoleon himself would be completely edited out of the text. As if he wasn't busy enough, during this time Fourier wrote his now famous 1807 paper. On the propagation of heat in solid bodies. A mathematical work on the theory of heat that presented one of his major contributions, the Fourier series. But it was an uphill battle to get approval from his peers. In 1811, he submitted his 1807 ideas for a mathematics prize. Along with additional work on the cooling of infinite solids and on terrestrial and radiant heat. Only one other entry was received, making Fourier's work the obvious winner. Finally, by 1822, he published his 1811 essay. Making the techniques of Fourier analysis available to everyone. To this day, the functions that he worked out have a multitude of applications in engineering, science, and mathematics. What are interpolation and extrapolation? Interpolation in mathematics involves finding a value, or outcome, of a function between already known values. In other words, it is a method of estimating the values in between sampled data points. Extrapolation in mathematics is estimating the value of a problem beyond the range covered by the existing data. Both methods are used a great deal in engineering.
What are interpolation and extrapolation? Interpolation in mathematics involves finding a value, or outcome, of a function between already known values. In other words, it is a method of estimating the values in between sampled data points. Extrapolation in mathematics is estimating the value of a problem beyond the range covered by the existing data. Both methods are used a great deal in engineering. What is a Fourier series? The idea for the Fourier series was developed by French mathematician and physicist Baron Jean Baptiste Joseph Fourier. 1768 to 1830, as an alternate method of expressing a function by the expansion of the function. A Fourier series is actually a specific type of infinite mathematical series that involves trigonomic functions. More simply put, it is essentially an infinite sum of sine waves. The Fourier series is used in applied mathematics. In engineering and physics, it is used to split up a periodic or continuous function into a group of simpler terms in electronics. It is used to express the periodic function seen in waveforms of communication signals. What is a Fourier series? The idea for the Fourier series was developed by French mathematician and physicist Baron Jean Baptiste Joseph Fourier. 1768 to 1830, as an alternate method of expressing a function by the expansion of the function. A Fourier series is actually a specific type of infinite mathematical series that involves trigonomic functions. More simply put, it is essentially an infinite sum of sine waves. The Fourier series is used in applied mathematics. In engineering and physics, it is used to split up a periodic, or continuous, function into a group of simpler terms, in electronics. It is used to express the periodic function seen in waveforms of communication signals. What is a finite element analysis? A finite element analysis also known as FIA or finite element method, is a powerful tool to solve problems in engineering, especially for heat transfer, fluid mechanics, and mechanical system problems. The FIA consists of a computer model of a material or design that is stressed, the outcome is then analyzed for specific results. In reality, the computer is conducting a numerical analysis technique used for solving differential equations and relating it to stress in the engineering problem. This technique was first developed in 1943 by Richard Courant, 1888-1972.
who used a form of FIA to find approximate solutions to vibrational systems. Early in the 1970s, only companies that owned expensive mainframe computers were using FIA. Including the aeronautic, automotive, defense, and nuclear industries. Since the mid-1990s, however, use of FIA has grown with the advent of faster and cheaper computers with more memory. The results are more accurate, too. Allowing various industries to analyze new product designs and refine existing products. What is a finite element analysis? A finite element analysis, also known as FIA or finite element method, is a powerful tool to solve problems in engineering, especially for heat transfer, fluid mechanics, and mechanical system problems. The FIA consists of a computer model of a material or design that is stressed, the outcome is then analyzed for specific results. In reality, the computer is conducting a numerical analysis technique used for solving differential equations and relating it to stress in the engineering problem. This technique was first developed in 1943 by Richard Courant, 1888-1972. Who used a form of FIA to find approximate solutions to vibrational systems? Early in the 1970s, only companies that owned expensive mainframe computers were using FIA, including the aeronautic, automotive, defense, and nuclear industries. Since the mid 1990s, however, Use of FIA has grown with the advent of faster and cheaper computers with more memory. The results are more accurate, too. Allowing various industries to analyze new product designs and refine existing products. What types of analyses interest engineers? There are several types of analyses that interest engineers, all of which involve mathematical modeling. Structural analysis deals with linear and nonlinear models and stresses on a material. The linear models assume the material does not plastically deform, the remaining deformation after the load causing it is removed. Nonlinear models stress the material past its elastic capabilities. The stresses in the material then vary with the amount of deformation. Vibrational analysis deals with possible resonance and subsequent failure. It is used to test a material that may experience random vibrations, impacts, or shocks. Fatigue analysis is used to determine the life of a material or structure. It shows the effects of occasional, periodic, or cyclic loading on a structure or object. Pointing out where cracks or fractures are most likely to occur. Engineers measure heat transfer to determine a material or structure's conductivity or thermal fluid dynamics. In this way, researchers understand how a material will respond to various hot and cold conditions or even how it diffuses heat and cold over time.
What types of analyses interest engineers? There are several types of analyses that interest engineers, all of which involve mathematical modeling. Structural analysis deals with linear and nonlinear models and stresses on a material. The linear models assume the material does not plastically deform, the remaining deformation after the load causing it is removed. Nonlinear models stress the material past its elastic capabilities. The stresses in the material then vary with the amount of deformation. Vibrational analysis deals with possible resonance and subsequent failure. It is used to test a material that may experience random vibrations, impacts, or shocks. Fatigue analysis is used to determine the life of a material or structure. It shows the effects of occasional, periodic, or cyclic loading on a structure or object. Pointing out where cracks or fractures are most likely to occur. Engineers measure heat transfer to determine a material or structure's conductivity or thermal fluid dynamics. In this way, researchers understand how a material will respond to various hot and cold conditions or even how it diffuses heat and cold over time. Why is finite element analysis important to many industries? Finite element analysis, FIA, is important to various industries especially those that need to predict failure of a structure, object, or material when under unknown stresses because it allows designers to understand all of the theoretical stresses within the structure. This cuts manufacturing costs that would occur if a sample of the structure was actually built and tested. FIA uses a complex system of points, nodes, making up a grid called a mesh. The mesh is programmed to contain all the material, properties and other factors that constitute the structure and determine how it will react to certain load conditions. Such as thermal, gravitational, pressure, or point loads. The nodes are then assigned a density throughout the material. All depending on the stress levels anticipated in a certain area. In general, Points with more stress, such as corners of a building or contact points on a car frame, will usually have a higher node density than those with little or no stress. As researchers examine the results of the FIA, they learn how the structure responds to the various stresses. In this way, a prototype of the structure won't have to be built until the majority of the theoretical kinks are worked out of the system. Why is finite element analysis important to many industries? Finite element analysis, FIA, is important to various industries especially those that need to predict failure of a structure, object, or material when under unknown stresses because it allows designers to understand all of the theoretical stresses within the structure. 
This cuts manufacturing costs that would occur if a sample of the structure was actually built and tested. FIA uses a complex system of points, nodes, making up a grid called a mesh. The mesh is programmed to contain all the material, properties, and other factors that constitute the structure and determine how it will react to certain load conditions. Such as thermal, gravitational, pressure, or point loads. The nodes are then assigned a density throughout the material. All depending on the stress levels anticipated in a certain area. In general, points with more stress, such as corners of a building or contact points on a car frame will usually have a higher node density than those with little or no stress. As researchers examine the results of the FIA, they learn how the structure responds to the various stresses. In this way, a prototype of the structure won't have to be built until the majority of the theoretical kinks are worked out of the system. What is dimensional analysis? Simply put, dimensional analysis is a way of manipulating unit measures using algebra to determine the proper units for a quantity that is being computed. For example, the units of length over time represent velocity in feet per second. Acceleration is velocity over time. Thus, acceleration will then have units of feet per second per second, or feet per second squared. What is dimensional analysis? Simply put, dimensional analysis is a way of manipulating unit measures using algebra to determine the proper units for a quantity that is being computed. For example, the units of length over time represent velocity in feet per second. Acceleration is velocity over time. Thus, Acceleration will then have units of feet per second per second, or feet per second squared. What is the least squares method? This mathematical procedure called either the least squares method or the method of least squares. Finds the best fitting curve for a given set of points by minimizing the sum of the squares of all deviations from the curve. It is often used in engineering for fluid flow. Certain elasticity problems and diffusion and convection in materials. What is the least squares method? This mathematical procedure, called either the least squares method or the method of least squares, finds the best fitting curve for a given set of points by minimizing the sum of the squares of all deviations from the curve. It is often used in engineering for fluid flow. 
certain elasticity problems, and diffusion and convection in materials. Why is Laplace transform important in engineering? Laplace transform is a way to solve linear differential equations and translate them into simple algebraic problems that are easier to solve. It was developed by French mathematician and theoretician Marquis Pierre Simon de Laplace, 1749-1827. Although it carries his name. The Laplace transform seems to have been first used by Denis Poisson, 1781-1840, in 1815. Today, it is used extensively in electrical engineering problems. Why is Laplace transform important in engineering? Laplace transform is a way to solve linear differential equations and translate them into simple algebraic problems that are easier to solve. It was developed by French mathematician and theoretician Marquis Pierre Simon de Laplace, 1749-1827. Although it carries his name. The Laplace transform seems to have been first used by Denis Poisson, 1781-1840, in 1815. Today, it is used extensively in electrical engineering problems. How are modeling and simulation used in engineering? Modeling and simulation have become an essential part of engineering on both a small and large scale. Because building any size of structure takes time and money. Engineers often develop a mathematical model, a set of equations that describe what may happen to a structure if it is built the way it is represented by the model. Using a computer, or graphic, representation gives the engineers a three-dimensional view. For example, before the space shuttle was built. Engineers used mathematical modeling to simulate what the craft would look like in three dimensions. In this way, the engineers learned how the shuttle would fly. How strong the heat-resistant tiles had to be in order to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. And even how to maneuver the shuttle under various conditions as it landed. The computer was the only way to solve such problems without real-life testing. It quickly and easily solved a plethora of mathematical equations especially calculus and differential equations that represented how the shuttle would take off, fly, and land. How are modeling and simulation used in engineering? Modeling and simulation have become an essential part of engineering on both a small and large scale. Because building any size of structure takes time and money. Engineers often develop a mathematical model, a set of equations that describe what may 
happen to a structure if it is built the way it is represented by the model. Using a computer, or graphic, representation gives the engineers a three-dimensional view. For example, before the space shuttle was built. Engineers used mathematical modeling to simulate what the craft would look like in three dimensions. In this way, the engineers learned how the shuttle would fly. How strong the heat resistant tiles had to be in order to re enter the Earth's atmosphere. And even how to maneuver the shuttle under various conditions as it landed. The computer was the only way to solve such problems without real life testing. It quickly and easily solved a plethora of mathematical equations especially calculus and differential equations that represented how the shuttle would take off, fly, and land. What is the pH scale? The pH scale stands for P, potential of H, hydrogen, scale. Or the logarithm of the reciprocal of hydrogen ion concentration in gram atoms per liter. In simpler terms, the pH is merely the measure of the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. The pH numbers are based on a scale from 0 to 14, in which numbers less than 7 represent. Acidic solutions and numbers greater than 7 represent alkaline, base, solutions. A reading of 7 is considered neutral. Mathematically speaking, once the concentration of hydrogen ions is determined chemically. Based on moles per liter, the pH value is established by taking. The exponent used in expressing this concentration and reversing its sign. It is most often expressed as the notation pH equals log 10 H plus. For example, if the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution is determined to be 10 to 4, or 0.0001 moles per liter, the pH is 4. Many people are familiar with the pH scale from high school. Especially the practice of using special whitish paper called litmus paper to check for pH. The paper contains a powder extracted from certain plants, allowing the user to determine acidity, the paper turns red. Neutrality, the paper stays white, or alkalinity, the paper turns blue, of various solutions. The stronger the acid or base, the more intense the red or blue, respectively. And pH isn't just for use in chemistry class. For example, it is also important to people who work the soil. All plants need a certain soil pH to grow and flourish. Which is why most gardeners and farmers determine the acidity or alkalinity of their soil in order to grow better crops. What are calories? To most people, calories are usually associated with a very large piece of chocolate cake. But in that case, they are called nutritionists calories, or the unit of energy producing potential. Equal to the amount of heat that is contained in food and released upon oxidation by the body. The body needs the calories in the foods we eat to use as energy. 
This is why nutrition and weight control texts often contain such entries as a 140 pound person walking for one hour at a moderate pace burns off 222 calories. In chemistry, a calorie also refers to a unit of energy. But in terms of chemical experiments, a calorie is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius from a standard initial temperature at a pressure of one atmosphere, sea level. The unit measurement for energy is a joule, in which one calorie equals 4.184 joules, one joule is translated. Most often in metric, as the energy needed to lift 2000 grams a distance of 10 centimeters. What are some examples of weather prediction models? Because there is more than one group carrying out weather predictions. There are many computer models used by meteorologists around the world. For example, the United States National Weather Service's weather predictions are carried out at the National Centers for Environmental Prediction, NCEP. The NCEP runs several different computer models each day to determine the best weather forecasts. Some are used for short-term forecasting, others for the longer term and some are used for global or hemispherical predictions, while others are only regional. They include several mathematically intensive computer models. For more information about computer modeling, see Math in Computing. NGM NGM, or the nested grid model, is one in which observations are converted to values at various points that are evenly spaced. Making it easy for the computer programs to plug them into equations. This model is now considered to be obsolete. ETA The ETA model was named after the ETA coordinate system which is a mathematical coordinate system that takes into account topographical features, such as mountains. It is similar to the NGM model and forecasts the same atmospheric variables. But its smaller grid gives a more detailed forecast. ABN, MRF, and GSM The ABN model, MRF, medium range forecast and the GSM, Global Spectral Model, convert data into a large number of mathematical waves. They then return the waves in a manner that will produce a forecast map. ECMUF The ECMUF, European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, is considered to be one of the most advanced weather forecast models in the world, it is mostly used for the Northern Hemisphere. UKMIT The UKMIT, United Kingdom Meteorology Offices Model also gives forecasts for the entire Northern Hemisphere. MM5 The MM5, Meso Scale Model No. 5, and WRF, Weather Research Forecast Model, are actually the same models. The MM5 has long been a research computer model for smaller geographic forecast regions such as Antarctica. The WRF is the name for MM5 as an operational model, not just for research.
Who first calculated the distance from the Earth to the Sun and Moon? Around 290 BCE, astronomer and mathematician Aristarchus of Samos, c. 310 BCE to c. 230 BCE, used geometric methods to calculate the distances to and sizes of the Moon and Sun. Based on his observations and calculations, he suggested that the Sun was about 20 times as distant from the Earth as the Moon, it is actually 390 times. He also determined that the Moon's radius was 0.5 times the radius of the Earth, it is actually 0.28 times. The numbers differ not because Aristarchus had no geometric knowledge, but because of the poor instruments used at that time. These calculations were not the only contribution made by Aristarchus. He was also the first to propose that the Earth orbits the Sun many centuries before Nicolaus Copernicus, see below. This concept was radical for his time, because it conflicted with geocentric religious beliefs and Aristotle's principle that all objects move toward the center of the Earth. Who was Hipparchus? Hipparchus of Rhodes, also seen as Hipparchus of Nicaea, as he was born there, c. 190 c. 120 BCE, was one of the greatest Greek astronomers. A partial list of his discoveries includes, being the first to discover the precession of the equinoxes, compiling an extensive star catalogue, assigning magnitudes as a measure of stellar brightness, and calculating the length of the year to within 6.5 minutes of the correct value. His planetary models were mathematical, not mechanical. And although Hipparchus did not invent it, he was probably the first person to systematically use trigonometry, which was a necessity for most of his discoveries. What is numerical weather prediction? Numerical weather prediction is forecasting the weather using numerical models. Because of the complexity of the mathematics involved not to mention the number of variables. Needed to predict the weather all numerical model studies are run on high-speed computers. The computer solves a set of equations. Resulting in a computer model of the atmosphere showing how weather conditions will change over time. How do computer models attempt to predict the weather? In general, computer models used to predict weather use around seven equations that govern how the basic parameters temperature, pressure, and so on change over time in the atmosphere. Scientists call the study of how they can physically and mathematically represent all the processes in the atmosphere dynamics. In reality, everyone knows computer models can't perfectly predict the weather at this time. 
This is because of several factors, including errors in the initial conditions. Or the observations the model gets to begin making its forecast, and errors inherent in the model. A computer model can't take into consideration all the factors controlling the weather. Long-term forecasts are even more inaccurate because these two errors are compounded mathematically over time. What is the least squares method? This mathematical procedure, called either the least squares method or the method of least squares, finds the best fitting curve for a given set of points by minimizing the sum of the squares of all deviations from the curve. It is often used in engineering for fluid flow. Certain elasticity problems and diffusion and convection in materials. What is population dynamics? One major area of interest in mathematical biology is population dynamics. A population is the number of individuals of a particular species in a certain area. Population dynamics deals with the study of short and long term changes in certain biological variables in one or several populations. Population dynamic studies have actually been around for centuries. For example, weight or age comparisons of human or other animal populations or even how such populations grow and shrink over time have long been areas of study. With regard to human populations, the two simplest kinds of input in a population study are birth and immigration rates. And the two basic outputs are death and emigration rates. If the inputs are greater than the outputs, the population will grow. If the outputs are greater than the inputs, the population will shrink. What are Kepler's laws of planetary motion? A great deal of mathematics went into the formulation of Kepler's laws of planetary motion. These laws were devised by German astronomer and mathematician and Danish astronomer Tycho Ubras 1546-1601 assistant, Johannes Kepler, 1571-1630. He presented the first and second laws in his work Astronomia Nova, New Astronomy. In 1609, the third law was published in 1619 in Harmonis Mundi. The three laws are as follows. Kepler's first law, or law of elliptic orbits, each planet moves about the Sun in an orbit that is an ellipse. With the Sun at one of the two foci of the ellipse. Kepler's second law, or the law of areas, an imaginary straight line joining a planet to the Sun will sweep out equal areas of the ellipse in equal periods of time. Kepler's third law, or the harmonic law, the square of the period of a planet's. Revolution is directly proportionate to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit.
Why is finite element analysis important to many industries? Finite element analysis, FIA, is important to various industries especially those that need to predict failure of a structure. Object, or material when under unknown stresses because It allows designers to understand all of the theoretical stresses within the structure. This cuts manufacturing costs that would occur if a sample of the structure was actually built and tested. FIA uses a complex system of points, nodes, making up a grid called a mesh. The mesh is programmed to contain all the material, properties, and other factors that constitute the structure and determine how it will react to certain load conditions such as thermal, gravitational, pressure, or point loads. The nodes are then assigned a density throughout the material. All depending on the stress levels anticipated in a certain area. In general, points with more stress, such as corners of a building or contact points on a car frame will usually have a higher node density than those with little or no stress. As researchers examine the results of the FIA, they learn how the structure responds to the various stresses. In this way, a prototype of the structure won't have to be built until the majority of the theoretical kinks are worked out of the system. What is engineering? Engineering is a discipline that deals with the art or science of applying scientific knowledge to solve practical problems, usually in the areas of commerce and industry. Scientists ask the why of a question, then research the answer, in contrast. Engineers want to know how to solve the problem and then how to implement the solution. But it's not always easy to separate the two. Often a scientist has to use engineering basics, such as building special equipment for research. And engineers often have to do scientific research. The word engineer, as well as engine, developed from the Latin root ingeniuses, skilled. In some languages, such as Arabic, the word for engineering also means geometry. The various branches of engineering include aerospace, agriculture, architectural, biomedical, computer, civil, chemical, electrical, environmental, mechanical, petroleum, and material science. What types of mathematics are used in engineering? Mathematics is definitely a necessity in engineering. Especially the fields of algebra, geometry, calculus, and statistics. Certain divisions of engineering rely on variations of mathematics. Including combinations of arithmetic, algebra, geometry, calculus, differential equations. Probability and statistics, complex analysis, and others. For example, civil and structural engineers use a great deal of linear algebra and work with matrices. 
mechanical engineers use logs and exponents, calculus. Differential equations, and probability, and statistics. And a chemical engineer uses such mathematics as algebra and geometry. Logs and exponents, integral calculus, and differential equations. What is biology? Biology is the science of life. It includes the study of the characteristics and behaviors of organisms. How a population, species, or individual comes into existence and evolves. And the interaction of organisms with the environment and each other. How did Pierre Simon de Laplace apply mathematics to astronomy? French mathematician, astronomer, and physicist Marquis Pierre Simon de Laplace, 1749-1827, was one of the first to work out the gravitational mechanics of the solar system using mathematics. In his Mécanique Celeste, Celestial Mechanics, Laplace translated the geometrical study of mechanics used by Isaac Newton to one based on calculus, or physical mechanics. He also proved the stability of the solar system, but only on a short time scale. Laplace is also known for his theory about the formation of the planets. He believed they originated from the same primitive mass of material. A theory now known as Laplace's nebular hypothesis. His other studies included major contributions to differential equations and to the theory of probability. What are interpolation and extrapolation? Interpolation in mathematics involves finding a value, or outcome, of a function between already known values. In other words, it is a method of estimating the values in between sampled data points. Extrapolation in mathematics is estimating the value of a problem beyond the range covered by the existing data. Both methods are used a great deal in engineering. How are modeling and simulation used in engineering? Modeling and simulation have become an essential part of engineering on both a small and large scale. Because building any size of structure takes time and money. Engineers often develop a mathematical model, a set of equations that describe what may happen to a structure if it is built the way it is represented by the model. Using a computer, or graphic, representation gives the engineers a three-dimensional view. For example, before the space shuttle was built. Engineers used mathematical modeling to simulate what the craft would look like in three dimensions. In this way, the engineers learned how the shuttle would fly. How strong the heat-resistant tiles had to be in order to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. 
and even how to maneuver the shuttle under various conditions as it landed. The computer was the only way to solve such problems without real-life testing. It quickly and easily solved a plethora of mathematical equations especially calculus and differential equations that represented how the shuttle would take off, fly, and land. What are the major scales used in interpreting hurricanes and tornadoes? There are two major scales used to interpret hurricane and tornado intensity and thus potential damage. The Saffir Simpson Hurricane Damage Potential Scale is a hurricane. Force scale using the numbers 1 through 5 to rate a hurricane's intensity. The scale was developed by engineer Herbert Saffir, 1917, and pioneer hurricane expert Robert Simpson. 1912, in 1971. A number on the scale is assigned to a hurricane based on its peak wind speed. It is also used to give an estimate of the potential. Property damage and flooding expected along the coast from a hurricane landfall. The Fujita Pearson Tornado Intensity Scale, or F scale, is used to measure tornado wind speeds. It was developed in 1971 and named after Tetsuya Theodore Fujita, 1920-1998, of the University of Chicago and Alan Pearson, who was then head of the National Severe Storms Forecast Center in Kansas City. It was Fujita who came up with a system to rank tornadoes according to how much damage they cause. He developed his categories by connecting the 12 forces of the Beaufort Wind Scale. Knots based on what the sea surface looks like from smooth to waves over 45 feet, with the speed of sound, Mach 1. Then, for each category he estimated how strong the wind must be to cause certain observed damages. Fujita's scale was later combined with Pearson's scale. Which measures the length and width of a tornado's path, or its contact with the ground. What are astronomical units in light years? An astronomical unit is one of the more common measurements used in astronomy. It is a distance equal to the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. Or 92,960,116 Halley's Comet, named after Edmund Halley. Last appeared near Earth in 1986 and will be seen again in the night sky in 2062. Stone slash Getty Images. Miles, 149,597,870 kilometers it is often seen rounded off to 93 million miles. 149,598,770 kilometers, and used in reference to great astronomical distances. For example, the Earth is 10 from the Sun, the planet Venus is 0 0.70. Mars 1.50, Saturn 9.50, and the farthest planet, Pluto, is 39.50 from the Sun. A light year is an even larger unit. As the name implies, it is the distance light travels in one year. Or about 5.88 trillion miles, 
9.46 trillion kilometers. In most cases, light year measurement is reserved for deep space objects. For more about measurement, see mathematics throughout history. What is the Hubble constant? Astronomers have always been interested in the age of our universe and the speed of various objects in space. The Hubble constant was devised by American astronomer Edwin Hubble, 1889-1953. It is the ratio of the recessional speed of a galaxy because the universe is expanding to its distance from the observer. In other words, the velocity at which a typical galaxy is receding from Earth divided by its distance from Earth. The reciprocal of the Hubble constant is then thought to be the age of the universe usually written in terms of kilometers per second per million light years. If the number is high, the universe would be very young. If the number is low, the universe would be much more ancient. Although there have been numerous theories, the true age of the universe is usually considered to be somewhere between 12 and 20 billion years old. The most recent agreed upon rate at which the universe is expanding is approximately 20 kilometers per second per 106 light years of distance. That makes the universe about 15 billion years old. <laughs>